What are Unix environment variables and how do they work on the Mac? Hi, this is Asian G from the Full Stack Videos channel. If you're doing programming, you'll need to learn how to set Unix environment variables. In my other videos, I've introduced the terminal application and basic Unix commands. Luckily, that's all you need to set up Unix environment variables and in this video, I'll show you how. But first, what are environment variables and why do we need them? When we write programs, we want the code to be uniform wherever we run it, without any customization for different computers. But often, our applications need configuration settings that vary to accommodate running the program in different environments. For example, we may need to provide our own password for a program to send email. When we're developing on our own workstation, and a different password to send email when we set up the program on a client's computer. That's why we need environment variables. Input values to accommodate different environments. The idea is, code stays the same, but configuration values can vary. If we run a program repeatedly, we want to start it up with the same configuration values for environment each time we run it. And we can use Unix environment variables to do that since we're using Unix for our development environment on Mac or Linux. There's one really important use for Unix environment variables. Often our applications need credentials like login passwords or API keys. For example, our application may connect to an email account to send emails, but we don't want to include our secret credentials in our software code, especially if we're working on the code with others or sharing the code with the community. We can write our applications to read our secret credentials from Unix environment variables that are stored only on our own computer. That way, we don't have to program our secret credentials in our code where others can read them. When we open a terminal window, we're running Unix. On the Mac, the terminal application checks your home directory for a file named .bash underscore profile. That's where we store Unix environment variables. Any environment variable set in the .bash underscore profile file are ready and available to any program started in the terminal. Now, sometimes things work differently. The default shell program on the Mac is named bash. If some expert has been messing with your Mac, they may have changed the shell program from bash to some alternative shell program. And if you're using a Linux computer, your Unix environment variables may be set from a dot .profile or .bash rc file. These are not the defaults for the Mac, so we won't worry about them. Let's check if your Mac is set up to use bash as the shell. Open your terminal window and type echo space dollar sign shell and press the enter key to find out. You should see bin bash. If you don't, you'll need to search elsewhere for instructions for your shell. Let's check which file is used to set the environment variables for your bash shell. It should be the .bash underscore profile file. First, we have to find it, which is tricky because it is a hidden file that is not visible in the Mac Finder file browser. In your terminal window, go to your home directory by typing cd tilde. If you saw my Unix commands video, you'll remember that the tilde is a shortcut that takes you to your home directory. The tilde character is a shift squiggle key in the upper left corner on most keyboards. Type pwd to make sure you are in your home directory. Then type ls space minus la to see a list of all files including the hidden files that start with a dot. Look for a file named dot bash underscore profile. Let me show you what to do if you don't have a dot bash underscore profile file. It's okay if you don't have it, you can create one. Type touch space dot bash underscore profile and ls space minus la again to see if it is there. This is only necessary if you don't already have the file. Let's open the dot bash underscore profile file in a text editor. On the Mac, most beginners are using sublime text or atom. We can use other text editors like brackets or vim, but don't use Microsoft Word or other applications that add hidden codes to a file. It may be difficult to find your hidden files. If you are using Atom or Sublime and you've configured things correctly, you can open a file directly from the terminal. Open the .bash underscore profile file. 
We'll add a command that will verify the terminal window is initialized with a .bash underscore profile file. The file may already contain some commands for the terminal. Here's the command we'll add to the .bash underscore profile file. Use your text editor to add echo space env space set space from space tilde forward slash dot bash underscore profile. Save the file. The echo command prints a message to the console window. In this case, we'll see a message that confirms the dot bash underscore profile file was read by the terminal application. Let's try it. Close your terminal window and open it again. You don't have to quit the terminal application. Just close the window and open a new one. You should see our new verification message as the first line when you open a new terminal window. It's a handy way to remember where your environment variables are set whenever you open a new terminal window. If you don't see the message when you open a new terminal window, the .bash underscore profile file is not being used and you'll have to look elsewhere for help to figure out why your Mac is not set up with a default configuration. Now, let's try adding a new Unix environment variable. Let's add an environment variable that displays your email address. Open the .bash underscore profile file with your text editor and add a line near the end of the file. You'll add the command export followed by the word email in all caps, no space, then the equals sign no space and your email address. Email addresses don't contain spaces, but if they did, you would surround the value with a double quotation mark character. You don't need a quotation mark character unless the value contains a space or a character that has special meaning to the shell. Save the file. Your new environment variable is not exported to the terminal window environment until you close and reopen the terminal window. Remember, the .bash underscore profile file is only read by the terminal application when a new window is opened, so you need to close and reopen the terminal window to be able to use the new environment variable. There's another way to reload the environment variables. I'll type source space tilde forward slash .bash underscore profile. The source command reloads your .bash underscore profile file. If you can't remember that, just close and reopen your terminal window. Let's check if the environment variable was set. You can type env and hit enter, and you'll see a long list of environment variables. It may be difficult to find the new one in the long list. Unix commands can be strung together with a pipe character that is a vertical line above the backslash on most keyboards. You can use the Unix grep command to filter the output so you only see the email variable you just set. There's one more way to check if your environment variable was set. Type echo space dollar sign email. This uses the echo command to display the email variable. Using the dollar sign will force the shell to display the value of the environment variable. That's it. You've learned how to set Unix environment variables. Almost every programming language gives you commands to retrieve the environment variables. As you get deeper into programming, You'll use Unix environment variables for configuration settings for many applications you create. And it's a great way to keep your important credentials secret. If you're a subscriber, I'd like to say I appreciate your support for the project. To get more videos like this and learn about our project, send me an email. The address is more at fullstackvideos.com. Come back for more!